Well, that was uneventful. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hi guys, this is my review for Batman Hush, again, going backwards through the DC Animated Universe films. And I'm probably about to start a war here, but I never thought Hush was as good as everyone thought it out to be. Sure, Jim Lee's work is very, very good. It's a cool mystery in terms of how Thomas Elliot as Hush relates to Batman and how he uses his knowledge of Bruce Wayne against him. This film doesn't use any of it. It makes a stupid MacGuffin. But to be honest, I always thought Hush was overrated. I know it's one of the highest selling graphic novels of Batman of all time, but I just don't think it's that good. I remember reading it when I was an avid, avid Batman comic book fan back in my early teens and thinking, yeah, okay, I guess it's good. The artwork, yes, is fantastic. It's really, really good, but it's just not that great of a story. But while the comic is certainly a little bit overrated, the film adaptation of it is trash. It takes the cliff notes of the story, and even then it doesn't get it correctly, and puts it into this film and then tries to make a mystery out of it, even though it's so bad. It reminds me of the completely out of nowhere twist that they threw into Gotham by Gaslight, the animated film. This film does the same thing with the Riddler and it's just terrible. And the dialogue too is terrible. There's a lot of parts in this film where I feel that it was written by a five-year-old. For instance, the first time when Hush appears after he shoots the cable and Batman falls to the ground, nothing said, nothing happens. You're just like, oh shit, Batman's really fucking hurt. And then he walks towards the camera and says, Hush, Batman, hush. Who on earth is he talking to? Who the hell is that supposed to address? Other than us knowing that this is Hush. There's a lot of dialogue between Batman and Catwoman that is very, very hammy. For parts that I do like about it, Batman beats the ever-loving shit out of Joker isn't bad. It is pretty well executed, even if you as the viewer clearly know that Joker didn't do it. But then the scene ends with Gordon begging Batman not to kill him, and you can see that Joker's at the edge of life. He's about to get his neck snapped by Batman. Batman stops, gets up, and walks away, and then Joker all of a sudden just... Hmm. Well, that was unfortunate. And then Gordon punches him in the face. It looks like what Batman did to him was nothing other than a titty twister or something. Now I'm going off of memory from the comic, but if I'm correct, Joker is like at the edge of life at this point. He shouldn't be able to just get right back up and then take another punch from Gordon. It completely nullifies what just happened in front of us. And really is disappointing. And that happens through a lot of the film. At the scene when Nightwing and Catwoman go to the graveyard, I thought, oh yeah, this is the part with Bane thing and this is the big twist and whatnot with the grave, but no. Scarecrow comes out and just attacks them. Seeing Scarecrow as a scythe-wielding maniac is actually kind of cool for the character, but it's a complete tarnish of how important that part was in the comic. It doesn't even address anything with Thomas Elliot. They completely took that twist, that whole arc, and then they just threw it away. They just didn't do anything with it. They made everything about Riddler, and it makes the story so stupid. And maybe the other part I don't mind is when Catwoman straight up murders Riddler. She just cuts the cable to save Batman's life, and then the story just kind of ends. As I said, it's like cliff notes of the film. Batman and Catwoman get together because... There's no buildup of the relationship like there was in the comic. There's no kind of tension and breaking between the two. You can't get everything. Sometimes you can do it correctly. Sometimes you can just pass by. This one, no, it doesn't work. It's very disappointing. I heard there was a lot of kerfuffle about this one and I can completely see why. And the fact that this writer is the same guy who wrote the Justice League Apocalypse War or whatever the hell it was, the one where they all died and the one that I ripped on, it just helps further my argument that that movie is not as well written as people think it is because this guy sucks. In the end, I'm gonna give Batman Hush a two out of seven. Sorry for those of you who enjoyed this, I just did not at all. And that's nothing to do with my bias about the comic. It's just a poorly put together movie. I'm hoping as I slowly start to go back towards where I kind of left off back in like 2015, 2016, these movies are gonna get better because right now I'm not very happy with how it's going. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.